Welcome. Um, so yeah, Eclipse IoT has been around for like five years now. This is an initiative that started um, end of 2011. Um, and there's lots of open source technology being developed at Eclipse IoT. I will spend just 20 minutes um, walking you through what is available. Uh, you may be familiar with some of the projects. You may not necessarily be um, uh, aware of kind of the big picture. How can you use Eclipse IoT technology for building real solutions as opposed to just like using um, the, the open source components as kind of building blocks. So Eclipse IoT, as I said, is, um, is around for, for five years now. And what we do, just like other open source communities, of course, is like be, um, building a community and ecosystem around open source technology, open source software for IoT. And yeah, so I'm going to try and remove that one. Thanks. Let's see. Thanks for that. Hopefully, better now. Um, and so, yeah, we are an, an open, um, an open community. Um, lots of, uh, lots of companies, lots of individuals, lots of projects being developed, and it's kind of hard sometimes to understand what we really do. So, hopefully, today and this morning, you will learn more. Um, I don't think I need to. Um, I'm assuming that most of you guys are. Uh, if not IoT expert, are uh, somewhat familiar with the kind of the typical architecture of an IoT solution. Um, we're going to try and see where and what kind of software you can actually put in this typical architecture where you have your devices, your sensors on the field, like the constrained devices often, and you need to, you want to access the data and to, 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 to basically analyze the data and stuff. So how do you actually connect the devices? Well, often you will use a gateway, right? And eventually, maybe the device will connect directly to the cloud. And at the end of the day, what you want is be able to make sense of all the data that's coming in, build dashboards, build uh, mobile applications, web applications. So it's essentially about um, programming and putting intelligence in your devices, in your gateways, should you have gateways in your solution. And probably also a big, a big chunk of the, the solution will be about putting some software in your uh, backend infrastructure. So very quickly, just to make sure that we, uh, we, are, uh, we are aligned on what's kind of the, the typical constraints, the typical um, characteristics of what I would call a device or a microcontroller, if you will, we're really talking about constrained uh, equipment. So like software-wise, it means that you need to be careful about what you're going to put uh, on there. You need to be careful about the power consumption uh, quite often, and it's very likely that this, the, the equipment is going to be very specialized. So you don't need like a full-blown framework for doing everything. You just want to do, I don't know, you want to monitor the, uh, the temperature of, of your engine in your car, so you don't need to support so many protocols. It's just maybe canvas that you will want to use in that case. Um, gateways. Gateways are more about um, bridging, connecting your devices, your things, you dump devices uh, uh, most of the times, connecting them to the internet. So it's about pr providing the connectivity, providing the, the messaging capabilities, how do you aggregate the data coming from all your devices um, and eventually push the data, the messages to the cloud. Um, you probably want to do some kind of edge computing. Ideally, you want to leverage the fact that the gateway is going to be way more um, capable than your, your dump microcontroller. So you will have some, um, uh, some room for local processing, local data, um, heavy lifting, if you will. And eventually, you want to, uh, to make it to the cloud, right? You want, um, you want to make sense of all the data. Uh, you want to integrate your sensor data with the rest of your um, existing uh, solution. You want to, to, to basically feed the data into your uh, enterprise backend. You want to do data analytics. And, um, Above all, I guess, uh, you want to scale. You want, to, you want your solution to support the wide variety of devices. Like, uh, there will be lots of different devices, lots of different gateways that you need to support. Um, not only are they different, but there's lots of them, right? Billions. Everybody knows that there will be billions of devices in, in the IoT, right? So what does it mean if we try to kind of identify the, the typical um, stack, software stack that you need on a device. I, I won't go into uh, many details because I actually want to jump um, more into um, what it means in terms of Eclipse IoT software. But again, the device is constrained, uh, very limited processing power, limited capabilities. So it's really going to be about 
what's the, 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 the minimal footprint you could have for providing communication capabilities to your, to your device, to your microcontroller. Again, if you're in a car, how do you get your microcontroller to talk to the, uh, to, and, and to expose the data from, from your car? Um, how do you remotely manage the device? However constrained is the, the thing, the, the dump uh, thing of the IoT, you want to be able to upgrade um, the, the firmware if there is a security issue or if there is a bug of any kind. So, Remote management, communication capabilities are very important for the, for the device stack, and we will see what it means for um, Eclipse IoT uh, technology. The gateway is kind of a device on steroids. Essentially, the idea is that you want uh, the gateway to aggregate lots of devices, sensor, um, and um, bridge that connect, that, connect that to the internet. So you will need some uh, network management capabilities, routing, firewall kind of features, if you will as well as, as I said earlier, um, a way to, to, to manage the, the, the data and, and consolidate the data locally and that kind of stuff. Um, in terms of platform, here, um, the idea is that on the server side, you want um, software that's going to help you scale. How do you um, build a server infrastructure that manages devices that may be talking 10 different protocols? How do you make that one single, um, feed that into one single backend solution? How do you manage the data? How do you do time series database kind of stuff? Um, and, and what's more, how do you actually enable people to build their own solution on top of your cloud platform? If you're Amazon, if you're Microsoft, IBM, or if you're you, you want to build um, a backend infrastructure that provides API for anyone to build their dashboards, their mobile applications, et cetera, et cetera. So if we, um, and there's also, of course, some concerns uh, like sort of cross um, cross layer and cross stack kind of concerns. Of course, you need to to, to be careful about security. Uh, you want to make sure that you have a way to understand what the data is all about, um, and you need tools, development tools. How do you simulate your solution? How do you debug? How do you deploy uh, your um, applications remotely? So that's kind of cross concern, um, uh, yeah, um, problems here. I actually want to use the opportunity of this, this talk to make sure that you put names and faces on our speakers. Uh, speaking of ontologies, Boris is going to be um, speaking this morning about, about that very topic. And Dan from Samsung will give us a talk about um, tools for IoT development. So it should, be, uh, it should give you some, some insight about uh, what's available there. It looks like I have yet another notification bumping uh, there. Um, so yeah, and all, the, all those tags, um, and hopefully this is where open source helps. Um, you want your device stack, your gateway stack, your platform stack to be, you want them to be very independent for, from, from each other. You don't want to build sort of a monolithic solution where only devices that have been uh, manufactured by uh, whichever manufacturer will only be able to talk to a very specific gateway or a very specific um, uh, backend platform. So hopefully yeah, open standards help here and modular software. You want to be able to, uh, in your gateway stack, um, to replace uh, the protocol implementation that like, if the gateway is talking MQTT, um, maybe this is not what you want in your solution and you will want modular software so as uh, you can uh, kind of mix and match all the solutions. So this is kind of what we're trying to do at Eclipse. And for the last five years, we've um, aggregated an ecosystem of 25 plus open source projects that are kind of the building blocks, the modules, if you will, that you will use in an IoT solution, in a device, in a gateway, in a cloud. And we're um, going towards um, providing more of an integrated stack. So as not only do you have the building blocks available, but if you actually want to use um, uh, a more integrated solution for say a cloud platform, um, hopefully you can, you can source that from Eclipse IoT. For devices, what does it mean? Well, uh, projects like um, Eclipse Edge, Eclipse Paho, Eclipse Wakaama uh, can help you kind of build a, a device stack where Edge is kind of uh, the um, Android for IoT. The idea is that on top of um, the APIs of the microcontrollers, Edge will provide a Java API for talking to the sensors, talking to the, um, all the GPIOs and, and whatnot. And on top of that, if you want to actually have some communication capabilities in your device, uh, well, maybe you will want to use MQTT, in which case, well, the C implementation of Eclipse PAO 
is actually meant to be very portable, so you can run Eclipse Pahoe on top of Edge or, or Again, speaking of modularity, if you don't really care about Edge, maybe you will still use Pahoo, only you will use it on top of your own hardware abstraction layer and you won't use uh, Edge in that case. Remote management, how do you do firmware upgrade of your device? Well, there is this very nice standard called OMA Lightweight M2M, uh, for which at Eclipse there is an implementation called Eclipse Wakahama. Again, this is C code, this is very portable, and if you want to do remote firmware upgrade, remote battery monitoring of your device, you may very well use Wakama for that. Gateways. Uh, if you want to build a general purpose gateway that's going to kind of aggregate data coming from all your devices to the internet, uh, chances are you might want to look at Eclipse Cura, uh, which runs on top of um, um, some sort of hardware abstraction layer and application runtime called uh, OSGI. And Cura will provide you with all the features that I described earlier for um, like networking uh, capabilities in the form of configuring your firewall, if you have um, a cellular connectivity, how do you actually configure the cellular connectivity? Well, there's a software component that does just that in Cura. Uh, remote management is uh, available as well in the form of Eclipse Paho. If you want to use your um, gateway for industrial automation kind of stuff, um, Eclipse Milo can help you do OPC UA. Uh, that's one protocol. You may source protocol implementations from other um, vendors, other open source communities. It's, again, very modular. Um, Patricia is actually going to talk, Patricia from IBM, about how you can actually um, tweak uh, Cura so as it talks to uh, IBM Watson. And should you want to uh, plug Cura to your own cloud, this is also something that you can do. Again, uh, independence of all the, all the stacks. Smart home. Uh, I don't think we have any talks about smart home per se, although, although I think Boris is going to uh, briefly mention smart home for ontologies, but should you want to build a more like specialized gateway uh, solution for home automation, well, smart home will provide you with um, all the protocol implementations for um, Belkin, Philips Hue, uh, Sonos, whatever, all those kind of um, home automation gadgets. Um, provides you with ways to remotely upgrade your home automation gadgets. So this is also available from Eclipse IoT. Um, and then the cloud. And uh, there I would like to actually illustrate the kind of the, the thought process uh, going from the building blocks to a more integrated solution. Like at Eclipse, we have software like for the past four or five years actually, right from the beginning, We've already started working on the, on the components that you need for doing, say, device management. Like if you want to manage devices using lightweight M2M, what's going to be the server you're going to use? What come on the devices? And for the servers, Eclipse Lesion might be something you want to deploy. Uh, Eclipse Hookbit is something that can help you with your uh, upgrade campaigns. How do you roll out um, 10,000 of software upgrades to your devices? How do you manage the... Um, if there is an error, how do you roll back, that kind of stuff. So that's Eclipse Hogbit. Um, messaging, how do you do um, MQTT on a server? Well, we have Eclipse Mosquito. I'm sure you've heard about Eclipse Mosquito, and Camille is actually going to talk about um, scaling Mosquito, deploying Mosquito, and this is a yeah, very nice piece of software. Uh, again, very portable, very extensible. So we have kind of a building block for message routing, right? But how do you... Um, integrate the solution. I mean, if you have devices that talk MQTT, lightweight M2N, and maybe other protocols, how do you have one single solution to uh, archive the data in the same consistent data store? How do you manage the multi-tenancy of the solution? You need more than just the building blocks. And for us at Eclipse, that would be projects like Eclipse Kapua, Eclipse Hono, uh, which are essentially um, providing you the, with the um, integration platform for your IoT services. Like for aggregating, for doing all the messaging, Eclipse Hono can be your front end for your MQTT devices, lightweight M2M devices, OPC UA, you name it. Um, and Kapua can provide also more uh, like the, the integration with the data management, etc. And there, again, uh, one speaker this morning, right before the coffee break, I believe, is going to be Kai from Bosch uh, Software Innovations, exactly about that topic. How do you build an open source cloud infrastructure for IoT? And I'm really looking forward to uh, to learn more um, about, about that as well. So that's, that's Eclipse IoT. Like we have all those building blocks, a lot is happening. I want to spend the, the next few minutes uh, walking you through like 
what's the, what's the community at large? Um, we've been here uh, again for five years now. Uh, more than two million lines of open source code are available at Eclipse IoT. You can go and download um, Eclipse PAHO, Eclipse Edge, whatever. Uh, the licensing model um, is basically you get the code and you ship it in whichever uh, commercial solution um, that you want. Hopefully, you contribute back to the community your bug fixes, your feature requests, etc. But that's um, yeah, that's really a lot of code that you can get, and like in a wide variety of programming languages and. and uh, like there's lots of Java, but for of course for embedded you would find C code, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Uh, lots of projects. I think I probably mentioned what a dozen today. There's certainly much more. So um, hopefully you you will learn more this morning, and you can also check out our our website. Lots of developers working on it. Like the community is very active over the past 12 months. More than 150 developers actually contributed uh, code. Lots of uh, people um, looking at what we're doing and. What we also try and do is really build a community of um, skilled developers around IoT. We, we think, well, not only open source is important, but education and as an open source foundation, that's what we do. We do things like um, uh, developer and programming challenge. Uh, so like um, last year, uh, we've organized a challenge where more than 80 different teams um, entered the challenge to basically build the most innovative IoT solution. And uh, there's this one team in India who basically built a solution on top of Cura, on top of PAHO, to do remote um, um, healthcare, if you will. So, like, if you uh, live, live in a rural area, you can use some sensors and ECG and whatnot to measure your pulse, your heart rate, whatever, and send that to a doctor over uh, MQTT so as um, yeah he can monitor your uh, your health remotely. And that's really brilliant. You can you can certainly check out. And the solutions from the, 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 the teams, and that's kind of what we do. In addition to um, conferences, promoting um, and educating people, like if you are not subscribed to Virtual IoT, uh, that's a meetup, a virtual meetup. Uh, we do uh, webinars every um, uh, every two weeks, and you can um, you can have, uh, yeah, you can see IoT experts talking about um, uh, Eclipse IoT stuff and, and more. So that's uh, something you should really check out. Lots of um, lots of stuff is available from our um, YouTube channel. Actually, we produce lots of content um, that uh, you can refer to if you want to learn more about about the technology. And we want you guys to, to get engaged. Right this morning, um, hopefully you will learn more about what Eclipse IoT is. Uh, this is our website. Uh, if you go to uh, to the website, or maybe you want to actually go to iot.eclipse.org/slash projects if you really want to learn about the projects in particular uh, but that's our main website um, my colleague Ian and myself are going to be around uh, the well uh, three days of uh, think monk and IOT day today so feel free to to come and and, and talk to us to, to understand what we do and that, I think that's 20 minutes that I had um, thank you this is me on Twitter you can also um, ping me over email and we may have a couple minutes for questions if there's any questions thank you very much